I'm just fascinated by this incredible work of art. I mean, when I think about how people craft this, it's amazing. This is an image of Queen Idia, the legendary Queen Idia. Um, she was known as a warrior back in the days. She was the mother of one of the Oba, Obas of Benin. And um, I think his name was Esigie or something. And the story has it that she, she raised an army to fight all those who opposed her son, who wanted to prevent her son from becoming the Oba of Benin. And she was a warrior, a famous warrior. And she's representative of so many great women we've had over the generations in Africa and in Nigeria. And many of them, we still have them today in various aspects of life, um, business, um, religion, commerce, um, any sector imaginable. And one of them is Eugenia Abu. I told you we just came back from Abuja and she was one of those that we met in Abuja. Fascinating, incredible woman who has succeeded you know, in her areas of uh, expertise. In line with the National Library of Nigeria, the National Library of Nigeria is conducting a national readership campaign all over the country, trying to get Nigerians reading. And part of that campaign is getting people like Eugenia Abu to talk about their experiences, how books have influenced their lives, how reading has influenced their lives. And so part of that campaign is this segment, in which we speak to Eugenia Abu about books and reading in her life. Enjoy this. So it looks like you've had a lifetime of reading. I've been blessed. Um, my dad, the late Mr. Alfred Ambudu, was an educationist and uh, spent many years teaching. He was chief education officer for the North and then became a lecturer at Amadou Bello University, Zaria, in the Institute of Education, before going to serve his state as permanent secretary. So I basically grew up around books, and we've always had huge libraries in our house. And more than any other of my siblings, I was the one that my father would go into the library with because I was curious about books, and he, he noticed that. So I spent a lot of my time reading books a lot. Um, in that library, there were all manners of books, books that um, required me to find the dictionary quickly that gave me the opportunity to settle into books that were higher than me so i learned a lot from just hanging around books and today i really can do with cannot do without them i cannot do without books i have books in my car mm -hmm. when i'm traveling at the airport i must have a book in my bag because you know they delay you so much you need to read um, I'm, I'm, if you want to find me at an airport waiting room, you'll find me in the bookshop. <laughs> so because I had books around me, it became a habit. It's in my DNA. And I think all parents should do what my dad did for me. Mm. It has become for me that thing that has propelled me forward all my life. Is that what helps young people develop a, a, a reading culture? I've had people come to me to ask, I've got kids. They, they don't seem interested in books. What do I do? And the answer that usually comes to my head is surround them with books. Yes. Uh, I mean, if you surround kids with, with books, they tend to they gravitate develop to an affinity yes. for books. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Well, yes. When my children were younger, I used to read to them. So it's also important to read a fairy tale to them, I read a story to them, and point them to books you want them to read by leaving them lying around, you know, and talking about it from time to time. So... You're right by saying surround them with books. It helps them to develop the interest in addition to which if they are bored enough and they don't have TV, they will find something to do. And, <laughs> you know, I had a lot of any Blighton series in my house for the children. And then I wrote a lot of stories. I'm a writer. So I wrote stories that didn't exist anywhere um, for my kids uh, because I, um, sometimes you can't find the book you want them. So you write your own story for them that has a moral undercurrent. But don't hit them on the head with the moral. Children don't resist it when you're preachy preachy. 
There has to be a story that tells the tale in the tale. Yeah. <laughs> in the tale. Absolutely. You are not likely to be a good writer if you are not a good reader. No, Is that you, you will fail miserably if you haven't been reading. You can't write well. Um, because also, you're building your vocabulary bank. Are you not? Mm -hmm. um, so you, there are words that young people today, when you say it, you say penicity, they say it's not an English word. Mm -hmm. It is an English word. Um, if you are reading enough, you will find those words talked in the books you are reading. You can check the meaning and it stays in your memory bank for the rest of your life. So yes, if you are not reading, you are not likely to be a good, a good writer. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked you to um, read from your favorite book or one of your favorite books and yes. it looks like you struggled picking one. It was difficult. <laughs> I, I can see about 10 here. One, two, three, it, four, it's five. It's difficult. Six, I'll tell you one of the ones yeah. that is not even here because uh, I read a lot of African writers as well. We write very well. Um, we have a former minister in Zimbabwe called Sisi Dangaremba mm. and she, she writes absolutely beautiful books. Um, we have Chimamanda and everybody talks about Chimamanda's Purple Hibiscus and other books. But my favorite book is The Thing Around Your Neck. Mm. I don't have them here. It's a collection of short stories. Because mm. if you really want to develop your reading and you haven't read for a while, it's good to start with short stories. And yeah. The Thing Around Your Neck is a collection of oh, short, short stories. stories. Say You Are One of Them by Uwe Makpam. Um, became such an award-winning book written by a Jesuit priest, um, a Nigerian. So Nigerians are writing, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Trisha Mwabani, Ado Bi Mwabani, um, went on to write "I Do Not Come to You, by, not chance, come to you by Chance," which won the 2013 Commonwealth um, Prize for Literature, and that's a prize that's ten thousand pounds. Can you imagine? Oh. And it was won by a Nigerian. So Nigerians are writing such good books. This is how we have to end the show today because we've really run out of time. I'm looking forward to next week. As always, my name is Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.